What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're going to talk about US Q1 2020 vehicle sales and market share data. i um, got a ton of awesome data to go through in this episode. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, this is the first quarter that's been impacted by the economic crisis. So now we've got all this data from automakers reporting their quarterly sales. We've got some in-between lines data on what Tesla's US sales were. Um, so I want to go through all this data, see how the crisis has impacted the automotive market and particularly you know, electric vehicles. And additionally, how Tesla's market share has navigated through all of this by my by my calculations it looks like in q1 2020 the model 3 was once again the best selling vehicle in all of the u.s passenger vehicle sales in terms of revenue um, that's an incredible accomplishment given its electric vehicle competing with the internal combustion engine and this has been going on quarter after quarter so another uh, blowout quarter for tesla in the model 3 so without further ado let's just get into hypercharts and take a look at the data this is hypercharts.co slash tesla we have a u.s market share page um, which has all of the up-to-date data now updated with q1 2020 um, I think this is really cool to check out. So passenger cars in, in 2020, this is basically all sedan sales in the US. The Tesla Model 3 here coming in at six with sales of 44,500 units. This is just an estimate because Tesla doesn't provide us with this official data. Um, and the Camry was the best selling car with 77,000 units, Corolla 69,000, 64 for the Civic. So, you know, this is incredible. You might say, okay, Model 3, number six best selling car in the country. That's awesome. But reading between the lines, this is much better than it even seems because this is per unit. The Model 3 starts around $41,000 to the performance mid high 50s or even $60,000 plus, depending on which options you get. You know, the the Camry, the Accord, the Corolla, the Civic, these cars start in the low $20,000 price range. Um, I just did some quick back of the napkin calculations. You know, if we assume the average selling price for a Toyota Camry was $28,000 in the quarter, the average selling price for a Model 3 in the US was $52,000. Uh, you know, that's an 85% higher average selling price. We adjust Model 3 sales by 85%. They would have sold the equivalent of about 82,000 Camrys in the quarter, which once again is more than the $77,000. So my guess is on a per revenue basis, the Model 3 was the best selling passenger car in the the country. And no one on this list is remotely a luxury brand, so it's not really an apples to apples comparison. But we're going to get more into that in a sec. Um, I think this is also another fascinating way to look at it: small and mid-sized luxury cars. This is basically only taking into account um, the Tesla Model Three for the Tesla brand, but then you know the three series family for the BMW, uh, Mercedes Brand. I think it's C and E class, maybe um, Audi, Lexus, Infiniti, Acura. But as you can see, Tesla in the red here is the number one seller in the small and mid-sized luxury uh, car market. So they're outselling all the passenger cars in their small and mid-sized luxury sector. Segment, they are crushing it. Um, we're seeing sales of 44,500 versus 20,042 units for BMW, uh, you know, 17,196 for Mercedes, 14,000 for Audi. So, literally more than double um, the next best selling competition, BMW. I mean, these are the companies that everyone said would crush Tesla. But here's the data, you know, years after Tesla entered the market, years after that initial pent up demand, continually still beating them in terms of market share. Amazing numbers. I think this says it all. Um, and then if we go to electric and plug in vehicles, this is what is actually makes me a little bit sad to be honest because as you can see the Tesla Model 3 in that red just dominating every single car in the category um, then we have the Chevy Bolt here second but selling about you know one eighth to one tenth of the amount of the Model 3 and once again the Chevy Bolt having that same thing the Chevy Bolt 25 to 30 thousand dollars apparently dealers are also giving a huge discount on that so you know selling for about half the price of the Model 3 yet only selling an eighth of the units revenue adjusted it's like 1 20th um, uh, you know of the sales and so if we go to this chart and we take out Tesla the Model S and the Model X, you can see that um, electric vehicle sales have just been, and this Q1 weakness might be partly because of the illness 19 outbreak, but I mean, this is horrible. This makes me feel bad because everyone's always like Tesla's going to get so much competition. All the competition is going to come to Tesla. And that when you yet when you look at the data here, I mean, nobody is coming out. The electric vehicle market is shrinking without Tesla. I mean, that is so, so sad. Um, and no automaker. I mean, the Bolt is the, the, the only car that's even kind of, you could say, a slight success. Um, but even that, like sales are not really growing like crazy. If we zoom in on the Bolt here, uh, you know, kind of lumpy, but not crazy growth sitting around that four or five, six thousand, um, you know, units sold per quarter. Nowhere near some of these cheaper ICE sedans. So, you know, if we take a step back here, Tesla is absolutely dominating um, the US EV market and, you know, with like 80% market share of sales. I mean, this is uh, unprecedented and no competition is even remotely um, coming in. So now we can go to autocharts.info. This is an awesome chart, also built by Mo, who builds hypercharts. So you can go to autocharts.info if you want to follow along here. Um, this is Q1 2020 passenger car data, that same chart we're looking for with the Model 3. But I just wanted to highlight um, how all of these are budget cars. Like you can't find 
find another premium brand on the best-selling passenger cars until number 21, uh, and that's the 3 Series, and the 3 Series only sold 10,000 units, you know? Model 3, the same price range, selling 44,000. Like, it's it's hard to even, like, this is one of those things, uh, this is a product that is redefining categories. No one thought it was possible to sell this many electric cars because the market just wasn't big enough. You would have to outsell BMW. That was insane, but Tesla's done it. They've redefined the boundaries of the automotive market. I mean, that is, it's, it's incredible. If we zoom in to large luxury cars, let's take a look at the Model S, see how that's doing relative to the competition. Um, you know, outselling Mercedes-Benz by 2,300, uh, by double almost, 2,366 for the S-Class, 4,600 for the Model S, um, crushing the 7 Series, the Panamera. I mean, these are all gas cars too. It's not even just electric. This is just in terms of being a luxury car, uh, the Model S is outselling everybody. And actually, I do want to take a note to just show you where I'm getting all this info. Mo pulls this from directly from the auto manufacturers, good car, bad car, car sales base and inside EVs. So that's where the data is coming from um, if you want to check that out. But anyway, back to this, large luxury cars. Now let's take a look at large luxury SUVs to see the Model X. The Model X, unlike the Model S and Model 3, does not totally dominate its category, selling about 3,700 units. Still pretty good. I mean, up there with the Lincoln, better than the G-Class, but not as good as the GLS Infiniti. Um, so that that is what it is, but it is outselling Lexus and the Land Cruiser. Um, but I guess this shows that the Model X is a little bit more niche. Um, and now it's also interesting, I do want to pull up the um, crossover market because this is the largest vehicle market and this is what Tesla is poised to enter with the Model Y. And as you can see, you know, remember Toyota with the Camry in the sedan market selling 77,000, the best selling sedan. Now we're selling 97,000. Uh, you know, there's five or six, six vehicles, almost eight if you include these two, that sell 50,000 units per quarter um, of crossover and SUVs. I mean, if we go to passenger cars for comparison, uh, there's only three cars, I guess maybe you could say five, um, that sell about 50,000 per quarter. So I think, you know, my point here is, is Tesla is on the cusp of entering a market that is materially bigger here um, with the Model Y. So this is why everyone, and I've, I mentioned this on the channel before, but the crossover SUV market is the biggest segment and fastest growing of the automotive market. You have six units selling over 50,000 a quarter, 200,000 units per year in the U.S. alone. And remember what I was showing you earlier in this, the Model 3 is out, is, is doubling the sales of any of its competition. I mean, if if that's what the Model Y does, we could be seeing it selling hundreds of thousands of units in the U.S. alone. Um, there's a, this is the reason why Elon Musk has said the Model Y will outsell the Model 3 S and X combined in the future. So that just gets me so, so excited about the Model Y's potential, um, just seeing how much uh, market share Tesla is able to pick up. Now, if we go into uh, pickup trucks, I think this is this is where I have the most fun um, because pickup trucks is 637,000 pickup trucks sold in Q1. Even more, you thought 97,000 units was a lot of one model. How about almost 200,000 in a quarter for the F series and the Ram and the Silverado, each selling over 100,000 a quarter? And you can click on the name individually to see, um, you know, how many. I mean, this is consistent, hundreds of thousands per quarter. This is why people are getting so excited about the Cybertruck um, because if it gets up to this level and takes Tesla style market share, I mean, these are cars. The Ford F series is a cash cow that sells almost 200,000 every single quarter. Um, you know, it's almost a million units per year just in the U.S. alone. So this would, if, if Tesla sold this many Cybertrucks, it would like double the size of their entire company. Um, looking into the Cybertruck data, um, we've actually now seen that there's up to about 630,000 uh, Cybertruck orders. I've actually been in contact with like the Cybertruck uh, owners forum, um, and they put out this really cool YouTube video that is like a fake model of what the Cybertruck uh, product page would look like. I'll put a link in the description. It's so, so cool. Um, but I think, you know, this is at a high level, the thesis of, of why I get so excited about Tesla, because when Elon Musk and Gene Munster say they're so early in their product pipeline, there's so much innovation left for Tesla here, um, you know, you, it's really easy to sort of extrapolate why this company could get so much bigger and we could see them, you know, easily on a path to 100 billion plus in revenue. Because if you take what they've done to the Model S, the Model X, the Model 3, and sort of blend that market share gain um, with what they're about, to, with the new categories about to enter, enter Model Y, pickup truck, you know, I haven't even gotten started on the semi truck, um, but all these, you know, the Model 2, a cheaper car, more price like the Camry. They already have the Model 3 outselling the Camry in revenue. Imagine if they come out with a $35,000 you know, car with 300 miles of range. So I think as Tesla continues to address each adjacent vehicle category, you know, I'm expecting them to continue to get this crazy market share. Um, and this is what's getting people so excited why there's so much growth priced into the stock um, because every category they enter, they dominate. 
And I thought it was also interesting to note, just going back to, you know, Tesla's Q1 deliveries of 88,000 this quarter that were incredibly strong, you know, at a quarter where everyone in the auto industry is dipping, Tesla's up 40%. Um, and I actually looked at my Q1 2020 estimates before the COVID crisis, um, and I was estimating 90,000 units delivered in Q1 um, without any impact to China or the US. They had an impact in China and the US, and they still hit 88,000 cars. So that just goes to show you the strength of what Tesla's doing. And just to put into context how hard this is, um, we've been getting more and more news from Rivian uh, that the company is delaying uh, their production. The Chicago Tribune here um, saying that the uh, startup Rivian has pushed back the launch to 2021 as COVID uh, delays factor normal factory retooling. I actually have been in touch with Rivian's PR team briefly today, um, and they did basically confirm this, um, saying that they are delaying, uh, they've informed customers, they're slightly de delaying deliveries. They've put out like a blog post kind of thing uh, describing the situation as well. But so it's, and I think this is just, a, you know, a microcosm of what's happening. Additionally, the Bolt, the new Bolt by GM has been delayed as well. So now you have all of Tesla's competition delaying their EV timelines because of this crisis. Um, and when you look at the market share, it's like nobody can touch Tesla. All of the pundits, all the skeptics, all the experts have been saying people are going to enter the market and take market share, but it's nowhere near happening. Tesla continues to dominate. I mean, you're seeing the data. And then all we're hearing about the competition is they just keep delaying the releases of their models. Did Tesla delay the Model Y because of, of this? No, not at all. They kept it going. They innovated with touchless deliveries. I mean, Tesla's pace of innovation is moving so much faster. So anyway, at a high level, um, this market share data gets me super pumped about Tesla and tells me that in a normalized environment, when things bounce back, um, Tesla is going to take more and more market share. They're going to steal more and more auto sales. Um, and I'm just really excited for the Model Y because I think the amount of just sales of uh, the amount of people who want crossover SUVs like that is massive, and Tesla's delivered the electric vehicle they want, and uh, it's going to be really interesting to track how that market share um, follows and goes as well. But just to see it now, the Model 3, the best-selling car by revenue in the country, according to my estimates, um, incredible stuff by Tesla. Congratulations. Anyway, this is HyperChange. I'll see y'all next time.